and welcome back to America's Top Bus Builder. Savannah, are you ready for your chance to win the grand prize of building a bus and suffering through all the pain and anguish of it? I guess so. All right. Please buzz in if you have the correct answer. I'm going to ask you three questions. If you get all three correctly, you will be crowned champion here today. Are you ready for question number one? Yes. Question number one. When building a bus, what is a must? No rust. Ding, ding, ding. Correct. On to question number two. Question number two. What is your favorite dead language? Sanskrit. Yes, we also would have accepted gibbish or Latin. All right, number three. This is a tricky riddle, so we're going to give you an extra two seconds to think about it, but that's it. Here we go. What can heat your house, cook your food, and refrigerate your food? Electricity. Well, technically correct, we are looking for propane. I'm sorry. Thanks what? for playing, and welcome back to episode 15, Propane Installation. Right across this country, into this starlight. We are talking about our propane system in this video. Propane is a flammable gas. If you are unsure about any part of this installation, it is always best to consult a professional, someone who knows what they're doing. You don't need to be overly paranoid about propane. There are safe ways to do this install, but you need to make sure that you're doing it correctly to keep everyone and your build safe. The best thing they've done with propane is they've added something to it so you can smell the gas because the gas itself is odorless, but the additive is not. So if you smell it, don't freak out. Just shut off your propane and don't run anything until you can follow the steps to figure out where the leak is. There's no need to be scared of propane, but make sure that you are doing things correctly and consulting a professional if need be. In this episode, we are going to go over our entire propane system and everything that runs on propane. But first we should start with the basics of why we even decided to put propane on board in this bus. If you have diesel, for example, on your vehicle, you may choose to get a diesel heater because you already have that fuel source. This bus is gas, so we did not want to go with one of those diesel heater options, but also we are a big fan of propane for cooking specifically. Most likely you're going to want propane for cooking. It's going to be the most efficient way to do it. You can do electric, but at some point you might run into not getting much solar or having an issue with like a failed battery cell. And all of a sudden you have no power and no way to cook food. We are big proponents of solar and having a big battery bank. But again, there is always that slight chance that you might not have sun. You might not be able to charge your battery bank. You don't want to not be able to cook or not have heat or hot water just because there hasn't been any sun and you're maybe out in the wilderness boondocking. We chose an undermount style of tank for this bus and there's a couple reasons for that. Yeah, there's real pros and cons to either doing undermount or like a barbecue style tank. If you get one of those like you'd have for a grill, those can be pretty convenient because you can quickly exchange them, not even have to refill them at a lot of places, but you're going to trade off space within your vehicle or have to build a special box outside of your vehicle. The undermount is underneath the vehicle and generally you can get them in pretty large capacities compared to a barbecue tank. You got to weigh the convenience of having to find a place that will refill or losing the space inside your vehicle. Those are kind of your two factors with choosing a barbecue style tank or undermount. We prefer the undermount. You can get a lot. You don't have to fill it very often and it's more space in your vehicle to build with. The trade-off for having an undermount tank and having propane not take up any space in your build is the cost. You will pay extra for these undermount style tanks because you cannot take a regular grill propane tank and turn it onto its side. It does not work that way. You have to buy a specific horizontal propane tank and for that, you will pay extra. The first step in this process was obviously just to mount the tank 
underneath the bus. This is a 12.2 gallon tank. And I believe I just got really lucky when I ordered it off Amazon. They seem to go in and out of stock yeah. really quickly. And from what I've heard, people have had a really hard time getting these undermount tanks, but I will link where we got this one below. It's kind of a toss up as to whether it will be in stock or yeah. not. I'm crossing my fingers for you if you choose to go this route. Probably the most difficult part of installing this whole system is actually mounting the tank underneath the bus. In both buses that we've done, we were fortunate that the split from the AC that we were pulling anyways created a nice big spot to mount. And it was on the driver's side, right behind the driver's seat on both of them. And that's a pretty big unit. So as soon as you pull that, you've got a lot of room to work with to either do propane tank and or water tank. On both of our buses, there was a grate over top of where that split was mounted. So we just pulled that grate off and then we didn't have to cut any of the fiberglass out to make a fill spot for the propane. It was kind of already there, so we chose to use that. We took all the measurements and decided that we needed to make an extra set of brackets for this tank. We needed a tab to kind of hang off the edge of the frame. So we cut these rectangular pieces of really thick steel and punched out the bolt holes for them. Then we painted it black to make sure that they wouldn't rust underneath the bus, put them up under the bus and drilled out the holes into the framing of the bus. Yeah, this part is never fun. You're on your back, you're under it, you got your eyewear on and you still get stuff in your eyes somehow. And it takes a lot of force. Uh, best tip that we used was start with a small hole, get a little bigger drill bit and then slowly get up to the size you need. Just take your time, have a lot of drill bits and be patient. Once we had those brackets mounted and we're ready to put the tank in. We put it up under there, bolted it in and we're both kind of looking at it and going, that makes me uncomfortable. That's too close to the road. So we decided to take the tank back down and cut the brackets that was holding it up to the bus. These are the brackets that it comes with and they were just really unnecessarily long. So we cut them and basically reduced them by half their size. My dad welded it back together for us. He's not welding on the actual propane tank. These are just the brackets on top of it. So we were able to safely reduce them then when we put it back up and installed it, we gained several inches mm -hmm. and it looked a lot better. Endless problem solving. Absolutely endless. After the tank was installed, uninstalled. Reinstalled. Reinstalled after its little mm -hmm. haircut. We reinstalled it, checked everything out, gave it an extra little coat of paint and it looked great. Yeah, it looks so solid. Those metal plates we put in are those are not gonna give it all. It's really strong. Next up was preparing to put the propane lines from the tank into the bus. So we have three locations where we need propane. One is our heater, two is the oven stove, and then the third one is the water heater. And they're all on different spots. So we gotta figure out where those are gonna come into the bus and you gotta drill a hole through your floor we always make sure to put all the external propane lines into conduit to protect it and also secure it with wire clamps that get screwed into the frame of the bus. This stage of the propane system was just constant rolling around underneath the bus. Just pulling yourself through across the dirt and gravel underneath the bus, long days of just being covered in dirt. Mateo, was so excited because we were finally at his level. Yeah, I'm out under there getting all dirty, like complaining, trying to do this job. And he's like laying next to me. Oh, we're, we're hanging out down here laying? He was excited. He thought we, that I was down there just relaxing. It was no far from it. All the propane lines were running across the bus from the tank to the T taps and out to all the different appliances. So now you have propane lines coming up into your bus sitting next to your appliances, but it's just the raw end of the copper propane line. So you need an appropriate fitting for whatever will fit that appliance. Right. So in order to connect this to your heater or your oven or whatever it is, you need to get a flare tool and you need to get uh, the nut that goes along with that. So, and make sure you put the nut on the pipe first. And then flare it. Cause I've done that more than once. And then you're like, wait, where's the, oh, I haven't put the nut on. You can't get it on. Depending on where your appliances are, you may have to bend the pipe to reach that destination. 
If it's not in a real extreme bend, you can usually do most of it by hand. But if you have anything like a 90 degree turn, you almost have to use, there's a, a tool that bends the pipe, it sort of clamps on there and it does it like slowly. So it's real smooth. Cause if you try that by hand, it usually will pinch. If the line is pinched, you can't use it. You gotta redo it. Trust me, I've had to do that a few times. So if you have access to that tool, just do that right away. With the install complete, we now have our mounted propane tank connected to a two-stage regulator, which controls the flow of the propane to our three appliances. As we mentioned, we have three appliances that run on propane. The appliance that we're really excited about, we've talked about this a lot with our own bus build, and that is the Dickinson P9000 propane heater. We absolutely love this heater because it has sort of a fireplace front on it. You can see the flame burning and it's so cozy and nice in the winter time. It really does make it feel like you have a fireplace in your bus. This heater is a direct vent propane heater, meaning it has a double walled chimney that goes from the heater to the outside and it has a deck cap on it that makes it waterproof. Yeah, so it's exhausting out the center chimney and then the outer wall is actually pulling fresh air in to fuel the flame. So if you were ever to use something like a Mr. Buddy Radiant Heater, they are a little dangerous to use inside because you have to make sure to keep at least a window cracked. So if you don't have fresh air coming in in some way, it could potentially be really dangerous. With this, it's doing all that for you and putting out nice, hot, dry, clean heat. We brought the P9000 into the bus, hung it up in its space, and it fit really well. It looked good. So now we had to move on to drilling the two holes for the chimney. There was a cabinet over top of this heater, so the first hole was in the bottom of the cabinet to go up through it. And then the next one was out the side of the roof. Everything involving this roof has been a headache, and here we go again. Once again, the problem child has returned the roof that just keeps on taking and taking. We have to figure it out once again. Back in our solar panel roof rack video, we showed you how we mounted the three really large panels onto the roof. If you go back even further to beginning episodes, you know that the internal framing of the bus is non-existent in this bubbly front part of the roof. So we couldn't put a roof rack up there and that limited our space for solar panels. Now that we're ready to vent the chimney, we're in a bit of a predicament because we are sharing space with a panel and the chimney exhaust. And turns out if we were to go straight out the roof, it would come out underneath the front solar panel corner, which you just can't have. It would be too hot and eventually damage and be potentially dangerous. So we did a little reading in the manual that came with the heater and found out you can vent at 45 degree angles because this happens on boats sometimes or other installations. But we did have to do a lot of problem solving to make this happen. It's a curved roof right there. So we needed to fabricate some tricky things. And this is where we brought back Kevin. Truly, everyone needs a Kevin because we did. We went to him and he helped us design a chimney extension because although we were able to go out the side of the roof at a 45 degree angle, the pipe needed to be rigid once it exited the bus so that the cap, the deck cap that we talked about earlier that waterproofs the chimney, could sit upright. You don't really want that to sit on an angle. So we needed to design something that would sit against the curve of the roof and hold that deck cap up straight. We did have to put some really high heat caulk onto one of the seams on the outside of that, but now it is completely waterproof. This chimney extension works by taking the original chimney that comes with the Dickinson unit and kind of just extending it outside of the bus to take that 45 degree angle back up so that the deck cap sits straight up and down. So the chimney comes out of the actual heater unit. It goes through our cabinet. Then there's an internal plate and then it goes out the fiberglass roof. There's an external plate and welded to that is a rigid pipe that takes that chimney and puts it back up to straight up and down. 
and then the deck cap sits on top. Yeah, and as soon as you bolt those two plates together, they sandwich the roof, providing ample support to hold the chimney outside of the bus. Really the main function of this whole chimney in general is just to keep the internal exhaust pipe from touching the external intake pipe. They can't touch at any point, so you just have to make sure that they never meet so that you don't get a lot of heat transfer and it functions the exact way that Dickinson is intending for the chimney. Also, it's got kind of a funky, like, cool, like, steampunk, like, Dr. Seuss vibe going on where it's, like, poking out from the panel, like, hey, I'm here. It does. <laughs> I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. The last thing we had to change once the heater was installed was to provide some heat insulation on the upper cabinet. The distance between the top of the heater and the cabinet is just a little less than what is recommended in the manual. So we decided we would do some sort of heat insulation plate just for extra safety. And to make this heat guard, we brought back Kevin. Why not? Kevin! He helped us make what is essentially a pan that will mount to the bottom of this cabinet. We wanted to have a few different things. We wanted to have a heat barrier film, an air gap, and something that wasn't wood on the bottom of the cabinet to protect it. We took the aluminized heat barrier film, which is rated for up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a lot more than this heater will ever put out. This heat barrier film has an adhesive backing on it, so we cut it to size, pressed it up under the cabinet, then put the pan onto the bottom of the cabinet, screwed it all in place. Now we have that metal, the air gap, and the heat barrier film that should protect the cabinet and also anything inside of the cabinet from getting too hot. Yeah, it looks really slick too. Final step was just to put all the pieces together. So we got the heater mounted on the wall, the propane connected, the power connected for the fan. We got the insulation pan above it to deflect the heat. Now our steampunk Willy Wonka chimney extension that comes out the side of the bus is finished. The chimney is installed. The heat barrier is installed and the Dickinson was ready to be tested. It is a really big, really exciting moment to light that heater and see the flame in the little fireplace front. Last thing was to just fire up the stove, make sure all the burners are working, make sure the oven lights, and then we're good to go. Fire on the water heater, it takes about 15 seconds to purge the line and then it will spark for ignition. Here we go. It's getting a little bit chillier out, so it was really nice to turn the heater on, have a cup of tea, and kind of look around at all these appliances and things that weren't hooked up for so many weeks, and now they're all functioning, and it feels really good. Yeah, it's coming together. Thanks for watching, guys. That was episode 15. The propane is ready to rock, and I'm gonna go make some popcorn on that stove to make sure it's working properly, and I will see you next week. 
Coming up is some more plumbing with our gray water tanks and a bunch of other little things that buttons up the interior of this bus. We are so excited to be rounding out this series and getting this bus finished. Do all those things you do on the internet and we will see you next time.